Disney Princess, Enchanted Stables. Disney's Beauty and the Beast, a friend for Philip. It was a beautiful sunny morning when Belle arrived at Philip's stable with a special surprise for her friend. Guess what I have, she called happily as she hurried to her stall. The first carrots of the season, Philip. I picked them just for you. Philip was not as happy as Belle had hoped he would be. He sniffed at the bunch of carrots, but when Belle offered him one, Philip gently butted her hands away. Is something wrong? Belle asked, alarmed. Philip was always hungry. Philip hung his head and sighed a little sigh. There was something wrong, all right. Belle thought. Philip was the gloomiest horse she had ever seen. Belle decided that she had simply had to cheer up Philip. But how? If only you could talk, Belle said to Philip. You could tell me exactly what to do. But he couldn't, so Belle would have to figure it out on her own. She hurried to the library and gathered all the books about horses she could find. Then she sat down to read every single one of them. Sacre bleu, cried Lumiere. When he, Cogsworth, and Chip saw all the books, What are you doing, princess? I want to cheer up Philip, Belle explained. I hope I'd find the answer in one of these books, but I'm not having much luck. Ah, said Lumiere, before you came and freed us from the enchantment, we were often sad. But, the former Candlebrum remembered, we always found ways to cheer ourselves up. You must brighten his stall. It's important we have the right atmosphere, you know. I do believe that music is the key to happiness, Cogsworth said. It always made me smile when I was an enchanted clock. Or how about a bubble bath, Ch Chip chimed in. That used to cheer me up. Belle decided to give each other a try. First, she helped Lumiere brighten up Philip's stall. They covered the walls with wallpaper and trimmed them with gold. They piled pillows in the corner, hung curtains in the windows, and filled the room with flowers. And for the final brightening touch, they hung a huge chandelier from the ceiling. Voila, Lumiere exclaimed. What more could a horse ask for? Philip stares sadly out the window. I wish I knew, said Belle. Next, Cogsworth set up an orchestra in the stable. Belle, Lumiere, and Chip listened politely as Cogsworth led the musicians to a very, very long concert. Philip didn't seem to enjoy the concert much at all, but at least, Belle thought brightly, his appetite has returned. Finally, Belle saw it to that Philip was treated to a bubble bath for, it for a king. If this doesn't make him smell, Belle told Chip, I don't know what will. But in the end, though he was shiny and sweet smelling, Philip was just as glum and Belle was just as puzzled. Maybe the prince will know what to do, Chip suggested. Belle thought this was an excellent idea. She found the prince in his study and explained everything to him. I wish I, wish I knew what Philip needed, she cried. Do you have any suggestions? The prince thought for a moment. Maybe a walk would do him good, he said. A good walk always used to cheer me up. Of course, Belle agreed. That's a wonderful idea. Quickly, Belle changed into her riding clothes and hurried to fetch Philip's saddle. When he saw her coming, he perked right up. Silly me, what was I thinking? Belle, Belle said as she saddled him. You'd really like a nice ramble, wouldn't you? Belle led Philip to the edge of the forest where the royal orchids began. The sight of all the delicious fruit gave Belle an idea. Would you like an apple? Belle asked. Go ahead and choose one. Eyeing each apple and even sniffing some. But soon as his head was hanging and his steps were slow and heavy, it was clear his heart wasn't in it. Still, Belle did not give up. They continued onto a wide open meadow. You know, Belle said, I bet a good gallop would do the trick. She leaned forward and snapped the reins, giving Philip's side a firm nudge with her heels. As if to tell her, wrong again. Philip stopped, leaned down and nibbled at the clover. Oh, Philip, Belle said in despair. I just don't know what else to do. Then all of a sudden, Philip's ears pricked up and his head snapped attention. Belle barely had time to sit up before Philip charged off like a racehorse out of the gate. Whoa, boy, Belle cried, nearly falling out of the saddle. Philip, where are you going? But Philip just charged on and straight into the forest. At last, they emerged, emerged from the trees into a clearing filled with wild, beautiful horses. Belle and Philip stared at the herd before them. Then Philip whinnied and several of the wild horses answered him. Finally, Belle realized what Philip had wanted. Not a fancy stall or fine music or a bubble bath, not an apple or a run. What Philip had wanted was to be with other horses. 
Well, go on, Belle said as she swung out of the saddle. Go have some fun. She didn't have to tell him twice. Philip trotted eagerly over to the herd. All afternoon, Belle watched Philip race and play. Soon he had even made a friend. The two horses grazed, chased each other around the clearing, and dozed together in the warm sun. All too quickly, the day was over, and the sun began to set. Oh, goodness, cried Belle. We've got to get a going. So she put Philip's saddle on, and they started back toward the castle. I promise we'll come back soon, Belle told Philip. As they made their way through the meadow, Belle found herself wishing Philip had a horse friend in the castle. If only there was a way, Belle began. She was interrupted by the sound of hooves behind them. Belle turned around. Well, look at that, Philip, she exclaimed. It's your new friend. The horse who had played with Philip all afternoon was following them home. Belle and Philip slowed their pace, and the shy horse drew closer and closer. By the time they reached the castle, the two horses were walking side by side. Welcome to our castle, Belle told the new horse when they arrived. We're honored to have you as our guest. And to show the horse she meant it, Belle hurried to fix up the stall next to Philip's. There, she said when she was through. Now this looks like a stable where a horse or two could really live happily ever after. And that is exactly what they did.